I guess like all great preachers, want to start with three big ideas, right? Clouds, cocktails, and dreams. We have a lot of people trying to define cloud technologies, and by cocktails we mean people are out there making choices. They're trying to put things together with limited budgets, with limited resources, and limited human capital. And then there's a lot of dreamers who are giving a lot of interesting advice that reminds me of the advice when we all had websites, right? I can come in and build your website for X amount of dollars. And that was a range of advice. And then there's four companies, right, who are really being monitored closely in terms of the last few months and their services model. Facebook in Denmark is now a learning management system for college classes. In certain charter schools in California, they use it to make Lady Macbeth a Facebook page and for students to interact that way. So why are we building analytical models and why are we building big data models when some of the platforms already accomplish what we want? How many of you have shopped online in the past few weeks? Booked a plane ticket in the last three months. <clears throat> but kids don't have these options when they come to schoolhouses at mass. They don't have this kind of personalization. You want a true definition of personalization? Google. Their motto is build the search engine and everything else will follow. And it pretty much has. So who were these questions addressed to before Google? Teachers, right? So we have to learn to move from this sort of, you know, sage on the stage model to this guide on the side. And we have some technologies that are helping us do this. Fast Company did an expose of these four companies in the last two months. Who are they buying? They're buying cell phone companies, right? Who are they buying? They're buying data companies. So you want a STEM job that's really hot right now when I'm talking to my daughter in the car, my 16-year-old? Become a data scientist because that's going to be a very employable market. And we're learning it from these folks. Now these folks are also getting smarter too. Have you noticed they know what you like to buy and they know your preferences? So in education, why can't we wake up in the morning after inputting fields like I'm a kinesthetic learner? or I'm taking algebra, or I like to learn through videos. And my learner profiles come to me, not just my consumer profiles. So what's education's answer to this? Sexier test, right? <laughs> let's take some tests and let's put them online, and let's find a way to get Common Core to have a dashboard. Now, this is the PARC Consortium, if you haven't seen it. It's backed by Achieve, right? and states are participating in this, mostly large states, and districts and networks like New Schools Projects, or nonprofits rather, are saying, hey, we've got something coming about in a couple of years that's going to give us a lot of data on Common Core and what students are doing. But do we match any of our instructional practices to it? Well, what we know is that this particular company, right, uh, if we can get the clicker to go back, uh, maybe not. Do I need to drift over to you a little bit? Are we charged? Yeah. What we know is that this particular outfit, Smarter Balanced, is actually looked at computer adaptive testing and embedding objects in different ways. So not just putting tests online, but starting to think through what kind of adaptive testing does the learner get that's based on their preferences or how they learn. Now what I find interesting is that in the last few months, the shared learning infrastructure folks, Gates and Wireless, have started to think about building an app store for these better tests online. So they know that districts are sitting two years out and saying, okay, we're going to have better data online, we're going to be able to have tests online, but what kind of objects inform it? What types of experiences inform it? I was with the Gates folks in Indianapolis recently and I asked them this question. What's the incentive for businesses to contribute to the shared learning infrastructure? Why would I give away part of my technology to participate in this so others could learn? Well, what the answer was is you're going to have opportunities, objects, applications that live on this and it drives you to other analytics or other assessments. We had the question earlier about grading. What if I'm not assessing for average-based grading? What if I'm assessing for performance? So companies like Educate K-12, Project Foundry, companies like Show Evidence are interested in tracking what students actually know 
and then building the analytics behind that. And Gates is interested in this as well. Now, North Carolina has taken a stab at this. So they've spent time in their race to the top application working on an instructional improvement system. And these are the elements that are going to make it up. So here's a district, or here's a new schools project thinking about scaling STEM and supporting it. And they know that Parks and Smarter Balance is out there creating sexier tests. They know that Gates, with shared learning infrastructure, is figuring out ways to put objects and applications in there that would support that work. And along comes the instructional improvement system, which is going to look at how teachers, administrators, parents use and interact with all this data. So what is a district to do? What is an organization that cares about STEM thinking of in terms of how the user experience will be? Well, this is what the average district faces every day. The average organization, the average network. They have to decide what LMS to choose, what professional development service to use. And I go to districts around the country and I ask them to make me a list on the left ledger of what you're currently using in funding and technology. And that list is always multiple double digits. And the efficiencies are not shared across each other. And the human capital is not shared across each other. So how do we advise somebody who's thinking about how would I deliver STEM online or project-based learning online? How would I do it in a blended format? Well, then they're encountered with this. Everything's free and everything's got a use for a 2.0 application. So maybe we don't need to buy it. Maybe we just need to become really good curators of this type of information. Now think of that term museum curation, for example. When you went to the Smithsonian as a kid, and if you go now, there are exhibits that are still there. There are exhibits that have changed because Pluto apparently is not a planet, and now they've shifted that, right? And then there are exhibits that are there for two weeks because they want to attract certain audiences. So districts are faced with this decision, as is North Carolina New Schools Project. What are my three main roles if I want to be a change agent, if I want to be a service provider to my customers, and if I want to build capacity in the users? Now Florida Virtual School and Michigan Virtual really get this concept. They've changed their model. Florida Virtual is opening franchises with districts and helping them make the transition to be blended. That's their role. Is that a role for new schools, to be the STEM blended capacity builder? I think it is. I think as we think about the services that you provide, the expertise that you have, what Glenn so elegantly outlined earlier, how do you put those experiences in a new format? How do you move them from where districts are to where they need to be? Well, this was mostly a forgettable movie, right? With Tom Cruise and a few other folks. But one of the euphemisms in this movie was as people are looking at this stuff, they're like, well, I just want something better. I want the next thing. If we've read Disrupting Class, we know that just as we downloaded a bunch of computers in 96 and flooded the market with them, now we're doing that with iPads. And I go around to districts and I say, you've got the iPads, what are you doing with them? Oh, we're not sure yet, but we bought the iPads, right? And then I go to this district and I see their smart boards. Well, what are you doing with those smart boards? Well, we're mounting them on the front of the room so that teachers can interact and show the students. Just that decision to mount the smart board returns you to 19th century pedagogy. Just that decision. So as we think about what's next, cocktails. If you don't like the metaphor, choose casseroles, choose salads, whatever you want to put out, okay? But here's what I mean. We're thinking about advising districts and networks on multiple layers of a technology cocktail. So a school that I'm working with in Vermont says we want to go blended, we want to do something with assessment, we want a little bit of PBL, some online content, and then we want an LMS to run it. So those are decision points. We have to make decisions around those particular elements making up what they do. That's a technology cocktail. Now we can debate whether Agilix is the best person to do assessment with. 
We can debate whether the online content providers need to be SAS who's in the room or Discovery who's in the room. But as we look at that kind of approach, we also have to deal with this element. Now we've been talking a lot about this. V-Schools, company out of Florida. They give away laptops at $280 a machine and they give away wireless infrastructure for free. The deal is you have to use their content. So the question gets asked of the organization. I've got a legacy system in North Carolina, a legacy system in Vermont that uses statewide data. Does vSchools work with that data system? Kind of. Maybe not, right? And then the vendor has to answer this question. How do they make sure the data that they've got coming in the system actually works with what they're about to buy? So we give them some counsel on cost horizons. If you want to customize this work, here's what you've got to consider. So we've had this conversation at length today around customization and personalization in different forms. And what's happening is the market that's emerging right now while we're trying to decide how much money is enough or how much to pay for analytics, it's already disrupting us. It's already doing things that doesn't care about what we're doing around analytics or big data. So Zynga, how many of you are familiar with Zynga? Farmville, right? Only 3% of people are playing Farmville on Facebook and paying for the service. And that's generating billions of dollars. These are new business models. So companies like Republic of Fun or Manga High, which does math and STEM-focused gaming education, are free. So what is the cost of free? Well, Manga wants you to upgrade to the better algebra service. If we know in North Carolina that we've got the best teacher teaching polynomials, and she's had a track record of seven to nine years of results, why don't we let her just interlope on that unit on a free engine that's already created? Why are we building a learning management system or a data system around it? So part of thinking differently is looking at the platforms that are already there and organizing the cocktail approaches that can be there. This is a powerful quote. Russian social media mogul, the Mark Zuckerberg, okay, of Russia. Now, if you look at that quote, there's some exciting possibilities for kids. But there's also a lot of struggle and challenge for educators and adults to think through what that means. Companies don't go out and spend money in certain pockets anymore the way they used to. They look for developer fairs. They put out a prize contest, and they try to do it that way. That's what that quote is suggesting. So as we think about how to provide new schools with counsel on how to be a service provider, a change agent, we think about the roles they will play in providing those services. Part of the work of our firm, and when you Google us today or you spend time following up, we're working with organizations that have had enough of multiple solutions and want a comprehensive solution to future-proof their approach. That's about building a cocktail of services. That's about building a menu of things that have efficacy and are research-based. Enjoy the time today and look forward to the discussion on the panel.